Hello, you fine internet folks. We're here in Phoenix, Arizona at Intel Tech Tour 2025, where there's been a number of disclosures about Panther Lake and Clearwater Forest. And joining me to talk about the core architectures in both of those CPUs is Steven Robinson. What do you do at Intel? Uh, I am a CPU architect so the and I lead the uh, architecture team for the x86 cores. Awesome. So diving straight in, so we, we did do an interview about, uh, a recorded interview about SkyMont, but go, going back to SkyMont, what were the big changes from your previous architecture, CrestMont, moving into SkyMont? Yeah, so SkyMont, we did a lot. Mm -hmm. um, we wanted to build a wider, deeper machine so that we could sort of run more workloads. So kind of coverage is one of the terms we use sometimes. Uh, if we can get more workloads running on an e-core, mm -hmm. then we can bring more efficiency to the whole platform. So, you know, so sometimes people want, why are you adding IPC to an e-core? You're making it more expensive, right? Well, actually software runs better. So um, we made the out of order depth about 50% bigger, somewhere around that ballpark. Uh, we went from two load forts to three. Mm -hmm we roughly doubled the vector hardware. Mm -hmm. So we had two FMAs in Crestmont. Now we have four FMAs in SkyMont. Uh, and then the front end, we went from uh, kind of a six wide, two cluster, three decode front end to a nine wide, three cluster. Uh, and then uh, eight wide ALEC and, uh, you know, more branch prediction, a little bit more L2 bandwidth, uh, the whole, whole, the whole dot. So, uh Sort of a, an interesting quirk that I noticed about SkyMont is that it has four store ports and three load ports. Why the four store ports? Usually you see more loads, ports, and store ports. Why more store ports in this case? Yeah, so let's, let's break it down into address generation versus execution. Mm -hmm. So when you have three load execution ports, you need three load address generators. And so that's there. On the store side, we have four store address generation units, but we only sustain two stores into the data cache. So we have a little bit of asymmetry on the store side. So you're right, why on earth do we have more store address units mm -hmm. than store ports? The answer is um, you have hazards between loads and stores, and sometimes loads uh, get blocked on stores because we don't know the store address mm -hmm. because we're all out of order. So by increasing the store address bandwidth mm -hmm. that reduces the latency to uh, resolving unknown stores. So basically we get performance by just spending more time and effort generating store addresses so that loads don't end up blocking. Awesome. So I know in Darkmont something that caught my eye was the memory disambiguation. And that usually has to deal with store to load forwarding. Mm -hmm. So, but that's been a technique that's been around for quite a while. So what have you enhanced in Darkmont that you would like to talk about. Sure, yeah. So um, you're, you're right, it's, it's about store load connections. Mm -hmm. And so in, there's several different ways people do it. Mm -hmm. um, you can have a big, big table that tells you when it's safe to ignore stores. You can have a small table that tells you when it's unsafe to ignore stores. Mm -hmm. So you, you can kind of do it either way. And those two techniques end up kind of collapsing to the same answer mm -hmm. because the big table saturates and everything's safe. And mm -hmm. then so, you know, you, you discover the hazard. Mm -hmm. What we've done here is we've spent a little bit more time trying to have hardware that isn't just sort of a history table mm -hmm. uh, that actually figures out before address generation whether things are going to be connected. So when we bring UOPS to the memory subsystem to address generation, we actually can kind of look at some information and say, oh, I'm fairly confident that these loads and stores are connected. So you, I'm not using a table, I'm using sort of the inherent information about the instructions, whether I think they're gonna be connected. And that gives, gives us the ability to um, kind of slow down the load or, or, or something like that so that you know, we know when the store's gone now, it should be safer to do the load that we think might be connected. Interesting. Now, I know on Cougar, Corp, Cougar Cove, which is the P-Core in Panther Lake, 
that you also uh, commented on the memory disambiguation. Is that similar in Cougar Cove? It's, it's similar in kind of concept, but it's a bit different in implementation. Okay. So it's, it's, it's a different method, mm -hmm. but in the end, we're still getting to where we're trying to figure out when's a good time to schedule the load relative to the store that, that we're going to be dependent on. So, you know, I tell a story of two tables. Well, this is, this is kind of another table. And again, we're trying to say, okay, now I think it's time to do the load because I think it's going to be connected to the store. So s similar concept, different implementation. Okay. And I guess sort of what drives the two different implementations, like the reasoning behind the two different yeah. implementations, I should say. Um, I would say it's as simple as two teams working in parallel, doing independent research, mm -hmm. solving localized problems, coming up with solutions. And then we end up with two similar, but different implementations. Okay. It's two teams. Cool. So sort of talking about, um, Cougar quote, Cougar Cove, a key change made in Lion Cove was the lack of SMT. Mm -hmm. SMT in Lunar Lake and Arrow Lake is no longer there. Okay. Why wasn't it re... Could you have re-added it to Cougar Cove if you had wished? And why haven't you added it back? Like, what would be the reason why you wouldn't? Yeah. So let's talk about client first, mm -hmm. right? Where this is where we've, we've shipped products without SMT. When you have hybrid compute, SMT isn't uh, necessarily as valuable, right? So when you schedule something, you know, if you want performance, you schedule it on a P core, mm -hmm. and then you schedule it on an E core, and then once you've exhausted those, then you would come back and schedule a thread. So in Alder Lake, Laptor Lake, that's kind of how it works. So those are the those are the threads on top of the of the dessert, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in Lion Cove, in Lunar Lake and Arrow Lake, you know we removed threads we didn't have threads implemented let me say it that way and so that gave us we didn't lose a lot in client because of hybrid and the core count uh, but we gained a bit in our design execution so a little bit lower power because mm -hmm. you don't have the transistors and the logic to support smt a little bit smaller area because same same reason and it's a little bit easier to achieve your frequency target because, you know, the old joke that SMT is a bit in the mux, right? <laughs> so there, there, it's, it's, there's truth to that. There's a mux somewhere, mm -hmm. and, and that, that causes delay. So now you've kind of got something that, that's maybe a little bit easier and less expensive and maybe can go a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. So when, when you're doing Cougar Cove, you just take those basic premises and say, yeah, this is, this is what I'm going to do for the next gen as well. And so on server, I know that there have been some uh, data points that suggest that SMT do help. Mm -hmm. or SMT does help. So what is sort of your opinion there? Yeah, so server's a little bit different than client. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people have talked about doing hybrid compute in servers, but nobody does it. Mm -hmm. and, and the simple explanation is, if you want to be hybrid in servers, you do it at the rack level, mm -hmm. not inside an SOC. Why would I want asymmetry inside my SOC when I can have asymmetry, you know, in a 200 core server, another 200 core server, and you know, I've got a bunch of those. So you, you have the choice, you know, Am Amazon and others, they have different instances that mm -hmm. you can go and you can get. So what's the value of different instances within, within a one? So, so, so first, there's no hybrid in servers today mm -hmm. in, in general. The second thing is, um, you know, the kind of the story I told about you'd, you'd schedule on P cores, then E cores, and come back with threads. Well, if you don't have the E cores, then you're going to go on threads. Mm -hmm. Server workloads and, and gaming workloads and others, right, um, they miss a lot. They can have long latency. And mm -hmm. so when you miss and you have long latency, you've got available hardware. Mm -hmm. So in the server area, threads, there are more workloads that like it. You know, take a, a networking workload those usually like threads because they're moving a lot of data around and, and they're exposing those latencies. So the server workloads are a bit different and without hybrid, then SMT has more value. And so actually speaking on difference between client and server, so Darkmart is both used in Panther Lake and in Clearwater Forest. What sort of differences do you have to make in a core between server and client in terms of stuff like RAS features? Mm -hmm. So what differences are there in terms of implementation and what you have to design it? Yeah, great question. So um, in the client space, you can have RAS features, but they don't quite have as much value because the client system is different, right? If, if I have 
hundreds of cores or, or thousands of cores, reliability becomes very, very important. If I'm on my own little laptop and I have fewer, it's, it, it's, a, it's a different concern, right? <laughs> um, when Google Cloud goes down, everyone's very upset. <laughs> That's right, everyone's very upset. So clearly, you know, the, the, the bar, the reliability is there. Um, so in a core, um, if we want a target server, we, we, there are additional features we'll do, you know, uh, ECC mm -hmm. in the caches. Um, so inside the core, we do add features. Um, we can put that core in both if we want, mm -hmm. right? So um, there aren't a lot of physical differences between the cores and the two, but the environment is very different. Okay. So um, on the server side, maybe we have power gates per core, maybe we don't. The power delivery is different because the power delivery is different. You may change the decision on when to power gate and when not to. And the power level is different. So maybe power gating isn't as important in, in server because 24-7, you know, I'm, I'm always run, running. The other thing is there are things that can only really truly work at the SOC level because you need SOC components to be part of that. You know, take a technology like SGX or TDX, you know, uh, uh, secure computing elements. If you don't have the security and the controllers in your client parts, then even if you implement it inside the core, it doesn't matter because you need that whole system to do it. So there's a lot of things that maybe it's in the core, but you can really only test it and run it and, and productize it with the complete stack. And speaking of sort of the differences between client and server, I know in Lunar Lake, you talked a lot about how there was some novel bridge prediction stuff going on. Do you see that being helpful in server workloads or is, was that, um, were those uh, sort of improvements more targeted towards client? Everyone wants branch prediction. <laughs> Honestly, everyone does. So um, in client, you know, it, it's funny, um, games. Are, are, are games similar to uh, uh, web servers? N not, not, not really. R r not, not really, yeah. right. But in terms of code footprints mm -hmm. and paths and sizes, they're more similar than you realize. Mm -hmm. the same kind of thing for databases. Databases are very large binaries. They databases have, are actually close or very yeah. similar to games yeah. and they're uh, sort of what they like in a port. Yep. Exactly, right. So honestly, when it comes to branch prediction, we do it for everybody, mm -hmm. right? We do it for client, we do it for server, we get, and, and, and the things we do will be workload specific sometimes mm -hmm. in where you get the games, mm -hmm. but um, there's always a workload in both client and server that will appreciate what you did. So uh, sort of evolving on that, is it such that you, potentially you could make a branch predictor that is more targeted for server workloads and or client workloads, or is it such that there isn't really a difference there, so to speak. I would say that I think the internally within mm -hmm. Intel, we tend to think that server wants more branch prediction, larger capacity, mm -hmm. right? Um, bigger paths because we know that the workloads are complex in and, and large binaries mm -hmm. in the server. It really is in client as well, right? You know, just uh, which workloads are you working at, right? Exactly. You know, spec, okay, that's different, <laughs> obviously, right? But but again, games and databases, yeah, they're... I, I would argue games and databases are closer to each other than spec is to either, uh, in most cases. Uh, that can be true. <laughs> but um, sort of my final question here is, what's your favorite type of cheese? Oof. Um, uh, I like a good smoked Gouda, but honestly, we're doing uh, blue cheese Roquefort type things these days because, you know, a little musky. I, I will admit, blue cheese is not my favorite. I I, I had a really good um, uh, cheddar from uh, uh, Washington. Okay. And uh, yeah, that was that was actually really good. It was a smoked cheddar, which I'm not usually the biggest fan of, but... Uh, I, I do like the smoked cheeses. Mm. I, I really do. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. Of course. So uh, thank you so much for watching. If you like interviews like this, hit like, hit subscribe. Unfortunately, I do have to say all that because it does help with the algorithm. And go check out the Substack where there will be a transcript, a uh, written transcript of this uh, up there. And well, if you want to donate, PayPal and uh, Patreon are down below. And 
Have a good one, folks.